dream is to say that Islam and the West are not compatible. So I want to educate Donald Trump. I want to show him uh, that you can be Muslim and be Western. Would you actively campaign for Hillary Clinton? I've got to be honest, uh, I'm uh, a politician who admires democratic politicians. They are our sister party. As a proud feminist in City Hall, as someone who's a father of two daughters, I think Hillary Clinton being the president of the USA would send a loud and clear message, but also she's competent. She's got gravitas, she's got huge experience, so uh, you wouldn't be surprised to know I want Hillary to be the president. So with that in mind, I asked uh, Mayor Khan that if Donald Trump then visits London, would the mayor personally welcome him to the city? And he said, absolutely, I'd like to introduce him to a moderate Muslim and to some himself, in other words, and also uh, have him meet some other moderate Muslims hoping to change his views about the religion and, and, and people like Mayor Khan. Kate, all right, Kelly Cobiega in London, the election going all the way over. To London. Thanks so much. Former CIA director David Petraeus is echoing some of the London mayor's concerns about the conversation around Muslims in this presidential race. In a Washington Post op ed, Petraeus, who led coalition forces in Iraq and Afghanistan, writes Those who flirt with hate speech against Muslims should realize they are playing directly into the hands of Al Qaeda and the Islamic State. When Western politicians propose blanket discrimination against Islam, they bolster the terrorist propaganda. And part of the propaganda used by groups like ISIS is meant to recruit foreign fighters, including Americans. The FBI points out that the number of Americans traveling to join ISIS has actually dropped significantly, but questions remain over what is driving people to pick up and leave across the world to be fighters. NBC News chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel has been tracking down the identities of Americans who left to fight for ISIS. It's part of a new series powered by Dateline called On Assignment. Fascinating, Richard, because you were able to find actual people and then track how they got there. What we, we didn't uncover ISIS sleeper cells. We didn't go and knock on doors, you know, in, in, in basements and, uh, and find people carrying out plots. What we did is work the other way. These were people, Americans, who'd gone to fight with ISIS, specifically who'd gone into Syria in 2013 and 2014. We had their names from documents, a document dump which we received of thousands of names. From overseas? From overseas. And uh, we had their names, so then we started to work in reverse. So who are these people? Uh, what motivated them? What about their family members? Who knew? Who knew what, when, where, why, how? And, uh, and then we started doing our research. It's taken us several weeks um, to, to put this together. We identified some linkages between people. We identified some things that probably law enforcement uh, missed. And, um, and we're going to be rolling out this material, uh, rolling out shortly. Uh, I think you have a preview clip right here. Yeah, let's play the clip right now.